Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game repair video for you this evening. Today we have Cruising Exotica by Nintendo. You may be thinking, well, didn't you just do a Cruising USA? Well, yes, I did, but I sold it, so now I got to get another one ready. I like to try to keep a racing game in stock. Um, we've had pretty good luck with them. They, they sell pretty good because you can't really emulate them. You can, but you got to have a steering wheel. You know, it's just not the same. Totally different experience. So, I picked this one up a while back, and I haven't even plugged it in. I'm, I'm hoping the game board's inside. If it's not inside there, we're going to have to shut her down. This video ain't going to happen. But anyway, this is a Cruisin' USA that somebody has turned into a Cruisin' Exotica. Totally different than USA. And on my last video, I kept calling it a Nintendo game, you know. And everybody was like, ah, it's a Midway, it's a Midway. I'm just going to leave it at that. I prefer to call it a Nintendo. To me, it's a Nintendo game because I played it on Nintendo 64. And I think that's where most people played it. Obviously Midway had some involvement in it too. But Nintendo just sounds better to me. So they put a Exotica seat on it. I don't know why they went through all that trouble. You think they would have just left the USA seat on there. But maybe they lost it. I don't know. I don't have all the answers, I told you. I don't know. But yeah, they had to modify these little brackets a little bit. They cut some of them off. They cut it off a little bit so it lines up right. I took it all apart to get it all on my truck. And somebody has put an LCD screen in there. And unfortunately, at some point, it got this huge scratch in it. So I'm going to have to take that LCD out and throw it in the garbage. Because I can't sell it like that. So I'm going to have to get another LCD and mount it up in there. I'm going to try to mount mine a little closer to the glass. I don't know if you can tell, but there's like a, there's a good inch gap between the glass and the screen. I like to get it as close to the glass as I can and then I trim it out a little bit better. See they didn't even trim it out Harley. You can see right through the back. People aren't going to like that and you can still see the the wood in there. Come on now. So I guess the first thing we got to do is we got to take the back door off. Well, you guys probably want to know what I think's wrong with it. Let's just take a step back. I've looked it all over. I haven't plugged it in yet, and there's the cord. And you're probably thinking, come on now, Joe. You bought it and you never plugged it in. Well, yeah, I do that all the time, actually, because, I, you know, I buy them at broke prices. I know what's wrong with this thing before we even get started. Do you know what's wrong with it? Yep, you're, yep, that's right. It's broke. Alright, so let's take off the back door. We're hoping the game board's in there. You ready? Uh, 
the game board is in there. So, everything looks like it's in a, about the right spot. So let's plug it in and see what happens. I see lights. I see London. I see France. All right, we got something on the screen. Input signal not found. VGA. Please check cable. And it looks like it went into sleep mode. So, let's look at that. Actually, I think we probably better. Well. Huh. All right. So, there's the back of the monitor. See the VGA? It comes down, runs over to this board and there's nothing plugged into it. So, let's see. That's because they got it going down into there, that inverter. This is a line of, this is a little Chinese deal. But you still gotta have a video cable going up to there somewhere. I gotta be missing something here. There's nothing going to the monitor. I'm gonna have to plug a video cable into that, I would think. But they've already cut all my wires to go to this. I've never used it. I've hooked those up before without that little board. So I wonder if I could just unhook this VGA over here. Come down to this board. VJA in. This one's VJA out. Let's try plugging that baby in there. See what that does. I can hold the camera. Nope, that's the wrong way. What in the world are they doing? I'm just gonna get a. I'm just gonna go get a regular VGA cable because that one looks like it's. It's, like, it's got this style on this end. I need that other style on both ends. Alright, I'm going to go get another VGA cable and see what I can do with that. Alright, so I swapped the VGA connector. 
and it's running up to the monitor. They had this one in there before. See how it's different on each end? I needed both ends to be like this so I could plug in one end of that other end. So let's turn it on and see if that does anything. Looks like factory settings were restored. I've had a bunch of these. I know you can't really tell what that says, but it's saying center steering wheel and hit enter. And then it's saying turn wheel left and hit enter or something, blah, 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 blah. Looks like it's loading or checking some files. Looks like it might be getting ready to boot. I'm trying to. Yeah, it's on, but it's in black and white. But, remember how I was telling you about that scratch? And it's got this huge locked on area. So I'm not going to be able to use that monitor anyway. And I don't really like how they've got it wired up anyway. So I'm basically just going to... I know the board, the board looks like it's good anyway. Let me see if I can get some sound. Okay, well I got some sound. So, I don't really like how they got all this hacked back here. I mean, obviously you got to do a little bit of wiring to put in an LCD, but I'm I'm just going to put I'm going to put a video connector back on here like it's supposed to be. And then I've got a, another little board I'm going to use instead of that one. And you see my multimeter here, I also checked. I had 5 volts, but we knew that already because the board booted. So, I've got to play around with this wiring. They've got it all, they've got it all messed up. That ain't how I like to do it. You could probably make it work this way. If you go in there and mess with the clamp settings and get everything just right, but I'm going to try it my way. So I got it hooked up the way I usually do. I just run it to this little board here with the nice video connector on it, and then it just changed it to the VGA. I got this idea from our buddy Todd Tucky. We put a bunch of these in machines. And... Same washed out black and white picture. So I'm kind of sitting here scratching my head. And then I look over, I'm kind of looking at everything, checking everything out. Everything seems fine. But then I, I notice this over here. I don't know if that'll do it or not, but obviously that leg needs to be in that socket, so I'm going to take that chip out of there and straighten that leg out and 
put the chip back in and we'll see what that does. Well, it's not looking good. So I put that chip back in. And it was still in black and white. So then, just to rule everything out, I brought it back here on my messy workbench here. I've tried it on this monitor, I've tried it on that monitor, I've tried it on a CRT. And unfortunately, something's going on with the board with the red, green, and the blue. So, it's probably going to have a, one of these little caps or resistors, or even a chip is going to be bad. So we're pretty much at worst case scenario here because most of those are surface mount chips. So I'm going to have to take a break from this one and think about it for a little bit and come back to it. This is an actual arcade style LCD and it doesn't even need a converter and it's still in black and white. And again I tried it on a CRT over there so definitely something with the board. So, we'll do a little research on that, think about it a little bit, and we'll get back to it. Alright, I'm going to have to go to plan B. A couple days ago, actually, as luck would have it, I went and got a couple, well, some arcade games. So, here I am in my trailer. I got a cruising world here. I've got a cruising exotica. That's actually a dedicated cruising exotica. But I I know that the board's not in that one. And then I've got two Rockola Legends. I've got a Hydro Thunder. I got two Rush 2049s. And of course, where I need to be, I buried way back here. I've got a cruising exotica there, and another cruising behind it, and a pool table over there. So I don't really like doing this. I don't like taking apart from one machine to fix another one because to me, that's not really fixing anything. It's just part swapping. But in this instance, I actually got a really good deal on those cruisings because they don't have the seat. My, the Hydra Thunder doesn't have the seat either. At some point, somebody took the seats off of them and lost them somehow. I don't see how that's possible. But I bought four racing games that don't have seats. <clears throat> so they're going to be kind of hard to sell without the seats. But again, I got a pretty good deal on them. And I think two of them back there had the board in it, which, you know, I don't know if they work either, but I'm going to get that board out of there and see. And if it does, I'm going to ship that other board off to be repaired because it's got a lot of surface mount chips on them. And we don't really repair surface mount and stuff. We like through hole solder. And then hopefully I'll get that back and I can put that other board in this dedicated cabinet here. Piece it back together. I think the monitor's in there, but it's missing the game board. But I did actually get a seat for this one. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to dig that other cruising Exotica board out of that machine back there that doesn't have a seat. So I got the cruising Exotica board out of our parts machine in the trailer. And here is a Pac-Man board. See, all these are through hole soldered. So there's only one layer. All the chips go through this layer. And they solder in on the bottom side. So that's typically what we work on. So we could actually, you know, we could take every chip off this board 
and replace it without much trouble. But this is a cruising Exotica board and it's a lot newer obviously and all these have these are a lot of surface mount chips and everything's just tiny on this thing all these little caps and resistors bunch of surface mount chips so there's a lot going on and we have a problem on our other board with the colors and the colors come in right in through here and they, they run through all this stuff so it could be that chip, that chip any of those we kinda had a feeling it could be some of these capacitors over here but the problem is there's no schematics for cruising Exotica so we'd pretty much just be guessing at it so we decided we're actually going for the this may be one of the only times that we've actually shipped anything off to be repaired we try to repair everything ourselves but again a lot of this is just too new for us I realize this is an old game but to us it's still new compared to what we're usually working on and there's one more thing so cruising exotica boards they have layers they're like onions ogres are like onions they stink? yes no oh they make you cry no oh you leave them out in the sun they get all brown start sprouting little white hairs no layers onions have layers some of you are probably thinking what in the world is he talking about so it has layers this has all these traces it's just one layer on a pac-man board but on a cruising exotica board and a lot of newer computer boards and stuff like that there's traces inside the board so it'll have it may have three or four layers of traces it's not just a simple trace on the top and you can just run a jumper wire there may be a trace inside the actual circuit board that you can't even see and that's just when it gets a little bit beyond our tools and our skill set. We like the old stuff. So anyway, I'm going to put this cruising Exotica board back in the cabinet and we'll see if it works. Alright, I got it back in the game. Let's see what happens. Looks like it's loading. When it does this, this means the battery's usually dead or it just hasn't been turned on in a long time. So it wants to calibrate everything. see looks like it's on we got color <coughs> looks like it's running I'm not going to hit the start button because the volume I guess my volume control is messed up so I don't want to blare it. But yeah, it looks good. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to change this monitor, though. 
and that's behind that's actually on the screen so whoever installed the monitor had to have done that because you can't get to it obviously so that really stinks because it looks like it's a brand new monitor and I think they were kind of careless with it and threw it in there and totally put a huge scratch on it and those pixels there are messed up so now I gotta take that monitor out and I'm not gonna be able to put that in anything so I'm gonna have to throw it in the garbage pretty much and that looks like it's a brand new monitor it's still got the plastic on it I don't know if you can see it there but that's the way it goes sometimes I, I hate when people waste are so wasteful like that if they would have took an extra five minutes I could have used that monitor but they must have dropped it or something or scratched it on something but anyway that's what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna take that monitor out throw it in the garbage and put me another monitor in there all right I got the new monitor mounted I got it all adjusted got it widescreen you want it about the height of an Xbox 360 so now I'm gonna take the glass and I'm gonna mask off this area and then I'm gonna paint the rest of it black to help trim everything out and hide all my wood there and hide that big hole they got in the back we'll see how that goes alright so this is how I do it I just tape everything off you gotta make sure the glass is really clean and I'm gonna take it outside and spray paint it alright I got it all trimmed out I think it turned out pretty good can't see that big hole when they had in the back can't see the way it's mounted Tell you one thing, they got a nice fan in the back of it. It's not going to overheat. So I'm getting there now. I just got a. I'm going to replace the T molding. I've got to put my seat brackets back on. I got to test out the buttons. Got to make sure all my little light bulbs are working there and my. Uh, view buttons and I've got to attach the seat to the main part and just kind of button everything back up make sure everything's working on it I gotta put a new battery on the board so that it saves all the settings gotta clean it up but we're getting somewhere now alright I got it put back together I got my lights working. Every light was burned out, even the start button. The radio button doesn't light up. They did that on purpose. But, you know, it's got some wear and tear. The thing about the racing games is they're not really collectible yet. So you don't need to get them perfect. They don't need to be a 10. Most people who buy a game like this actually just wants it to play good you know their kids are gonna be jumping around beating on it so they're not all that picky when it comes to racing games because they expect it to have a little wear and tear but let's see if it'll play I put a new battery in it and these actually use a snap hat battery kind of a weird battery you can't see anything but you just gonna have to believe me all right let's see gotta try to hold the camera
Did you see that? It was on the wrong side of the road. I would never. Did you see that? Well, I almost had first place on the first try, and then he just barely made it by me. But anyway, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. We appreciate everybody that's been watching us. And we also would like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you buy anything on Amazon, it'll give us a percentage if you click our link first. You have to hit the more button underneath this video in the description. And then all the links will come up. If you click that link before you order anything on Amazon, it'll give us a tip for whatever you buy and it doesn't cost you any more so a lot of people have bookmarked it like we got a lawnmower guy that always that orders lots of carburetors and stuff and that's really nice of them and we appreciate it uh, and at the end of the month it really helps us out so anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one